go talk about a clock divider. And a clock divider takes in a parameter uh, divisor. And so if you, so a clock divider just outputs a clock that's slower than your input clock. So if your input clock, let's say was uh, three gigahertz and your divisor is three, then you want your output clock to be um, one gigahertz, right? So that's the problem. The tricky thing here is uh, odd numbers. Um, so for example, um, if you have a case where it's like this, I don't really know how to draw it that well, but bear with me here. Um, so let's say you have like one, you know, one clock, two clock, and um, three clocks here. Yeah, so one, two, three, right? So right in the middle uh, is actually like one and a half cycles, right? So your output here, if you wanted to divide by three is like, boom. Like this, right? So, well, let me make this clear. Um, actually it's not, it's, uh, um, it's, pause edge, pause edge, pause edge. Let's do it like this. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, 10, 11, 12, right? So for every four, you would swap. So like uh, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then something like this. One, three, four. Um, perhaps, yeah. So that's a bit, that's the kind of like the hard part uh, when you have odd numbers. For even numbers, you can just have a counter and then just say, well, if, yeah. So here what I'll do is I'll actually just count the pods edge and the neg edge, which is kind of the, I believe to be the trick. Um, Um, so your input is just a clock and uh, to an extent uh, your divisor. So if you want to uh, have a divisor of three, what what is the number that we need to count up to? Um, so if I have one, two, three, four, five, six, um, So I basically want to return a, uh, so you see these horizontal lines are one and these horizontal lines are like three. 
So, um, if I were to say like this was zero, one, so I'm just counting edges for five, right? Uh, so in three cycles, there's kind of six ed edges. And then I can say, well, um, I want to return, um, I want to switch my edges uh, every half of whatever this is. So um, I need a counter and the counter would need to have at least twice the divisors um, right uh, so that that's six here and then um, I don't really want to deal with uh, the crazy thing with divisor equals one <laughs> So if your interviewer asks, you can do something like this, right? Because it's the same thing, but that's kind of a trivial case. So I'm not going to, and then you'd end else begin end. And in this uh, second statement is what we're about to code up here. But let's not do with that uh, just because why would you ever have a divisor of one in a clock divider? Um. <clears throat> So uh, this local param, and then a local param is the uh, width count width is going to be just c log two of double divisor. Okay, so logic count width. Uh, I could do minus one zero to be. Um, I've learned in the past uh, not to do that. Uh, like I'd rather waste a bit and have it be more maintainable than, than not. So anyway, um, I actually would need a reset. Uh, so I can reset my counter. And if uh... yeah, so pause edge or neg edge clock or this. Um, so I take care of this and then so if it's a pause edge clock or a neg edge clock, I want to increase my counter. Um, but how much, right? So if counter is going to be your divisor minus one, so um, sorry, double divisor minus one, um, which means in this case, six minus one, five. Then your next uh, count should be zero. So you're just resetting it because the count has saturate. Otherwise, you're safe to go ahead and increment your counter. So this should hopefully count from zero uh, from reset all the way up till six minus one, five for this particular case. Um, and then, uh, yeah. My diagram's a little bit wrong, I think. Uh, it's more like this, right? So you have three cycles and you have one cycle here, uh, implying we go here like this. 
so on the third one, uh, meaning one pass, yeah, uh, then then we would toggle the clock. So, um, so what this what is this in math terms? So if The counter is greater or equal to, so if the counter is less than the divisor, then we want to return a one, otherwise return a zero or vice versa, it doesn't, if, we're, if the clock's starting at zero, we might just uh, say like, if the counter is uh, greater or equal to the divisor, very equal to because it's zero based. So the halfway point is, so the transition point is actually where the divisor is. So for example, zero, one, two is when we have, in this case, I guess zero. And then we would do the switch at the, at the divisor point. Um, and since we're counting pause and neg edge, this is exactly the halfway point uh, of a cycle. So this switches from zero to one at exactly the halfway point. Um, so if the counter is, you know, three, four, five, it'd be one. If it's zero, one, two, it'd be zero. Uh, let's see if this compiles. Um, 18 is not happy. Parameter is this, and I can't have a comma there. Okay, so um, let's instantiate this module divider uh, divisor. Let's 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 perhaps do an easier case of two maybe, um, and then let's do, and then we'll test out three and, and four and stuff. Um, yeah, clock is just clock reset, and it's just not a reset. And o'clock is just our output. And so, you know, we need to initialize this and um, um, and then so if we clock it, um, I guess I don't care too much. Um, the count, where is the counter at? And then I also want to see. Um, where is the uh, clock status? And I also want to see what the uh, output clock status is. Um, yeah. Is it I just call it counter? Yep, counter, and then I'll do um, and then the trick here, I believe, is I need to do these because we're actually caring about the negage as well. Um, so I'll wait 10 and then I'll, I'll well, I mean, I wait maybe nine, I'll flip the clock, I'll wait one for some logic to propagate. And then I'll print it, and I'll wait nine again to clock it again. I'll wait one again, um, and I'll flop and print once, and then I'll do reset zero to uh, let it let it go, let it go. Okay. Um, so the counter is zero because because it's at reset, right? So then 
uh, so that's cool. And so now I maybe want to do something like 32. And I guess I don't care about like the offset, like the phase offset much. I just want to see the cyclicalness of it. So for example, um, so this even number is not working because I want four to be zero, for example, right? So if I divide it by two, um, zero, one, zero, one, that's great. But then why is four, one? So let's debug this. Um, so the divisor is four, or sorry, the divisor is two. And so if it's two, um, Then it's uh, when when it's three, sorry when it's double divisor. Oh, because <laughs> I was over optimizing the case where it's three. So at least we know three works. All right. Yeah. So this is what this is more like it, right? Clock's doing zero one zero one kind of stuff, and then our clock's doing zero zero one one zero zero one one. Um, so let's do three and then four and then maybe five and then let's call it uh, So yeah, this looks okay. It's just you know positive, you know three negative three half so um, and then let's do four and then five. And let's do 16. Sixteen would yield how many cycles? Um, so 32 divided by 16 is two clocks. So zero, one, zero, one, and then right back at zero. So, I mean, yeah. Um, Oh, because this is the uh, final edge of this clock. Okay, yeah. So that's how you do this one. This one is a little tricky because of the oddness issue, uh, which then you have to basically, uh, I guess, double the denominator, so to speak. Uh, so then you you if you double your state space, then you can account for uh, the positive negative, and then you can just split it in half. Anyway, that's it for this one. Um, and I will see you in the next one.